Good morning, everyone. Jim Laird here from Largo, Florida. And we finally have my, my new computer set up, um, working through all the kinks. You know, obviously yesterday we had some internet issues. And so hopefully this new camera setup, this new computer setup will um, be beneficial. Thank you for tuning in. We're actually going to do the dangers of social media part two because there's a different aspect that I wanted to cover. Dr. Stillman is, is joining me. Um, full disclaimer on this stuff, like I struggle with this stuff, right? Well, obviously, I'm I'm helping Dr. Stillman build an internet business. Good morning, Jim. Spend, good morning, sir. We have to spend a lot of time on computers. So we build, you know, one of the things I do is I do a lot of my work outside to counter that. Um, you know, one of the things I struggle with is when I get under a lot of stress, you know, YouTube videos, like watching the history channel, like, like it's not bad stuff. It's just that becomes my go-to stress relief. And I have to literally deliberately say well, at eight o'clock, I'm putting this thing away. Um, you know, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to develop, um, these other, you know, I'm going to reinforce these habits instead of getting sucked into social media. Cause that's basically what it's designed to do. And I think one of the biggest problems with social media is the unrealistic expectation that it has uh, presented to people. People see only the good side of people's lives. People see people that are highly successful driving around in you know Lamborghinis and private jets. Either that's a fake persona lifestyle, or they don't see the years of work. Like all they see is somebody hitting like a major basket or. They set up, they set a huge deadlift PR or they, but they don't see the years of struggle and the years, or somebody gets on a, like, a, you know, a big podcast, like a Joe Rogan podcast, and they have all this success, but they didn't understand that this person was like helping people for decades before they ever got on Joe Rogan. So people see people have this instantaneous success and they think their life is going to be like that. And they think that life is supposed to be exciting every day you're supposed to it's supposed to be filled with beautiful girls and fast cars and like they don't understand the that that's not the normal existence for for most people mm, right and i think that people have um you know unfortunately there's there's a and we talk about this a fair amount there's not a uh great way to monetize the things that really move the needle for most people, sunlight, fresh air, walking on the beach, relaxing, being in nature, time, space, peace. It's very funny to watch people try to do it. Um, because a lot of the time, you know, for example, like these meditation apps and don't get me wrong. I like meditation apps. There's a place for them, but people will, you know, they basically are trading something else that's stimulating, uh, for things that are stimulating. It's just stimulating in a different way. And again, I think there's a place for them. I like them. I'm glad that they exist. But there's a real resistance to something as simple as going for a walk, sitting on a park bench, closing your eyes, um, relaxing. Most of the meditation strategies that I will share with people like the Roy Masters meditation or Joe Dispenza's meditations, uh, there's a very low adherence rate. People don't actually do these things. But when they do them, they will... You know, clearly feel better yeah. um, and it's they're very aware of this but we all as a matter of our as a, of our intrinsic nature struggle to do the things we know that we should do which is a big part of why you know jim and i talk a lot about accountability but with social media you know people will um they won't comment on this because it doesn't get traction you know, jim posted something really funny the other day it was something about a, it was a positive and uplifting quote and he said, came back to me and he said i'm really surprised that we didn't get as many likes on that as i thought we would and i said i'm not surprised at all you know people are looking for things that are a more stimulating and b they're intrinsically drawn to the doom and the gloom and negativity or just to not so much negativity but what's sexy exciting seductive inherently uh uh more stimulating and that's part of why what social media has become is such a you know cesspool of the worst kind of human emotions and thinking which is why it's so important for people to unplug from it and get in touch with people in person yeah absolutely and you know a, a friend of mine who's a pretty significant influencer was talking about this yesterday we were chatting about it and he sent an email out about uh, the truth like do you really want to hear the truth? 
and it was a client that he worked with where he actually told the client what they needed as opposed to what they wanted to hear. And, you know, the person emailed them back and was, was like, thank you for actually being truthful. And, you know, it was very difficult what you told me, but I did it and, and, you know, ended up being correct. And, you know, he wrote this whole thing about, are you being lied to? Like a lot of people are looking for all these shiny objects to help fix their issues when really the issue relies within them. They need to focus on looking within and, and basically working on themselves. And a lot of the issues that people are struggling with is, is coming from the things that are causing themselves to self-sabotage, but they don't want to sit and do the work on that. And when you tell people that a lot of people just tune out, like, you know, there's gotta be a supplement. There's gotta be, you know, there's gotta be a magic pill. There's gotta be a magic procedure and all these things are tools. But if you don't have a good relationship with yourself and if you can't sit quietly in nature, um, you know, like yesterday, I encourage people to just go sit outside for 10 minutes, like even here in my backyard, a couple times a day, I'll just go sit quietly for 10 minutes and close my eyes. And if the kids aren't in the pool back, I can listen to the birds chirp. And that just makes such a huge difference. It's so simple. But the other thing we see is when it comes to like expectations, as far as like body composition, self image, um, you know, we have all these influencers that are, there's a guy named, I can't remember his screen name, but I'll, I'll put it in the, in the, in the description. Like, it's like goob something, but he basically, I think you've seen that channel. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dr. Stone, he, he basically goes through and, and takes all these influencers and a lot of them are jacked already and they're all sucking their waist in and moving their shoulders out. And they're, you know, they're, a lot of them are selling like, you know, 10 week transformation courses and, and they're, 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 they're even their, um, manipulating or falsifying like before and after pictures from clients and it, it's just nuts like and and a lot of people don't disclaim you know they'll be like yeah i just like you know i just i just eat and eat chicken and broccoli and rice and they don't tell them about the fact they're on performance enhancing drugs or or you right. know, that they, they've trained for 20 years to look that way and 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 right. you know and, and 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 so people will look at social media and they'll see people with certain bodies and certain body types and they'll be like, well, I can be like that too, right? Or you have people that are, you know, selling certain programs or certain things and they don't, if you meet with them in person, everything that they're recommending and they're preaching, they don't do any of it, right? Um, yeah, right. Like I can tell you firsthand, like Rob Wolf, I've spent tons of time with Rob Wolf. He's a generally good person that like practice was what he preaches. Mark Sisson is the same way. Dr. Kirk Parsley practices what he preaches. Uh, John Wellborn practices what he preaches. My friend, Jim Windler, all the advice he gives is, is the advice that he does himself. Yeah. Right. And, and Dr. Stillman and I are not perfect, but we are always working towards, you know, self-care and, and putting self-care first. And we'll even say like, Hey, uh, we're getting a little ahead hand on this. We need to do X, Y, Z, but we're going, we're taking the steps in always working on self-improvement and, and, and self-care and all these things. It, it never ends. It's a battle that never ends, but there's a lot of people out there that are preaching certain things and then they, they just don't do them at all. Right. And, um, you know, part of this goes back to the fact that a lot of people in this world they get into they get into it because of some kind of something in their past uh you know a lot of people in the fitness mm -hmm. you know industry um you know they come from backgrounds or situations where for some reason there was a really big emphasis on how they looked how they appeared their ability to perform their ability to play a sport things like that and um a lot of people wind up with and this is one reason why we take on so many influencers and have so many of them who come to us for help is they get to a limit of what they know and suddenly it's not working for them and they fall apart. Um, you know, a great example is recently, it wasn't from our practice was the liver King and it was, uh, what's his name? Bigger of Steve yeah. bodybuilding Bigger coach uh -huh. in Thailand who came out and said, look, this guy was totally a fraud. fraud. He's, he's lying. And you know, I think most of these folks are doing their best, but they don't know what they don't know. And so they're trying to give people the best information that they can uh, 
while they're also scratching their head about why their best information is not getting them the results that they want. Frequently, it's results that are outside of their wheelhouse. Like, although ironically, sometimes it's it's what they know about what they do is enough to get them into trouble rather than keep them well. So, you know, like a breathwork coach whose breathwork routine is actually making them worse because they don't understand certain aspects of their unique respiratory mechanics, right? Um, you know, we've seen that things like that over and over again. And with the liver king, you know, he wanted to get jacked and ripped and whatever. He used a lot of, you know, outright, you know, gimmicks and fakery from what I can tell. I think that's fair to say, Jim, I'm not being, I'm not overstating, am I? No, he was doing like, you know, um, the one thing about, um, the one thing about, you know, he was basically saying like, Hey, if you, um, if you live this primal lifestyle, you can be this big, strong, you know, muscular guy like me, which is, if you live a true primal lifestyle, you're not going to look anything like that. Like, right. None of the hunter gatherer tribes are overly muscular. Um, and then he was taking copious amounts of performance enhancing drugs and eating insane amount of refined carbohydrates to get the, uh, the insulin and the, the, the carbohydrate loaded load needed to, um, basically sustain that amount of muscle. Like you, 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 you can't look like that eating a traditional primal diet. Like it's just not going to happen. Yeah. And you have to have super physiological doses of growth hormone, testosterone. And so he was basically going to this guy to get advice because he had wrecked his labs. He had wrecked his health. Um, and, and the guy was like, you're selling all these supplements, basically telling people, if you take these supplements and you live this lifestyle, you're going to look like me, which, you know, like I have no problem if he wants to be, you know, if, if somebody wants to take stuff and, and, and get big and strong and, and, but just don't say that, you know, these supplements or this lifestyle is what gave me this, be honest about it. Be like, I I'm on this and this and this and this, like a really good example of that is a guy named Mark Bell. Uh, I've known smelly uh, for, for a long time. I met him back in, in Louisville when he was wrestling and he was always from day one honest the fact that and stan efforting is like that too honest from day one and i've always been forward about that i use performance enhancing drugs but a lot of these people that are online will say take my protein powder you know take my vegan take my vegan protein powder take this supplement take this supplement but they don't say well they don't tell you about the gh they're on they don't tell you about the computer all they're on they don't tell you about the the fact that they're doing hrt and they just finished an anivar cycle and and not only that they died at 12 weeks for this one picture uh, and then also they photoshopped it too, but my, uh, my fancy supplements are, are basically what got me here. And that's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just chicanery. It's just not, not right. I mean, well, I think Mark the other problem is that people will, you know, they'll talk about the things they're doing that are getting them results in a, in a specific area of life, whether it's, you know, shredding out or leaning out or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, could be dropping weight, curing their headaches. I don't care, but they don't have a comprehensive view of the whole system. And, you know, smart, savvy people come to us and they say things like, you're the only person I trust to do this because you're the only person who doesn't seem to be totally obsessed with it and just trying to monetize in a very, in a very commercial way. You right. know, for example, somebody said that to me yesterday about bioidentical hormones. And that's because I have a, a, a respect for how many times I've been wrong. And I think it's important that people talk about that. You know, I, my experience with people who don't talk about their failures and how wrong they've been in the past is that they're either lying to themselves or they're lying to their patients. Mm -hmm. And it, neither one of those things is good. Uh, nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. Finding practitioners who own them is actually very hard. Well, I, I, I'd say you can't be an expert without making mistakes. Like there's well, no I, way. You know, like, my favorite you quote on this, right? I've uh, told you this quote before. Yeah. Niels Bohr. Quantum yeah. physicist said an expert is merely someone who has made all the mistakes possible within a very narrow field. Correct. And I couldn't agree more. So. So, yeah, the dangers of social media. It's very important to unplug. And I think it's it's they're making it tougher and tougher to unplug. 
and this is something that's happened in the last 50 years, 1970s, this interesting paper came out called Bowling Alone that was an analysis of the decline in participation in American bowling leagues, which, you know, if that didn't just put you to sleep, here's why it's important. Um, when people interact in person, they're in their engagement with civic society, you have a very different society than one in which interactions are virtual and or people are interacting in groups. You know, going to a bowling league is not the same as going to church. Uh, going to a Bible study is not the same as going to a concert. Because in two of those scenarios, you're focused on one thing at the front of the room, and there's not necessarily any human interaction. And it's very funny, and I've gone to many different churches because I've moved around the country a lot, and because I like trying new things. And some places you'll go and no one will talk to you if you're a new, if you're a new congregant. Um, just the same way you can, you get the same thing in businesses and people call this customer service, right? Where people warm and friendly and welcoming and inviting when you walk through the door, what we've seen as a consequence of a deterioration of civic life and people interacting in person and having personal relationships and congregating as they used to, you know, we, you'll drive around the country. And if you haven't noticed this, you will now you'll see these old Elks Lodges, Moose Lodges, Masonic Lodges, Odd Fellow Halls, all these old fraternal organizations where men used to congregate to just be men and to have fellowship or fraternity or brotherhood or whatever you want to call it. And that's actually very important. It's part of the decline in men's health. But what's happened in our society is that technology has ripped people away from that. You know, imagine what you would do on a typical Wednesday or Friday night if you didn't have a television and didn't have a cell phone. What would you do? You would seek out other people to hang out with in person. And the people in our society who are maintaining some semblance of normalcy are the people who keep technology at least somewhat at arm's length. And a lot of them are, I mean, many, many people have the conceit to think that their technology is not affecting them this way, that it's not influencing them this way. But I think that's very, very I think that's hubris. I think that they're wrong. And it's part of why people are in such a difficult state. We have people who come in to work with us and regularly they'll, they'll tell us what so-and-so said or such and such said, or they read this book or whatever. And we'll have to explain how it doesn't apply to them or doesn't, it doesn't work in their context and they have to change what they're doing in order to get the result that they want, which is almost always getting back to some kind of quality of life that they've lost. If you're watching, please give us a like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Uh, yes. We'd really appreciate it. It helps the algorithm. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it um, below and we'll get to them. Um, I, I think the other thing, I actually was, was watching something this morning um, talking about the history of ESPN. Mm. And, you know, I'm old enough to remember when there was no ESPN and the only way to get your sports scores was like in the paper or at the end of a really horrific news cycle um you know so you'd watch the news for like the news was an hour and the sports would be for 10 minutes at the end and when espn started how they created this whole you know 24-hour sports network and now you have these talk shows that basically are just to create drama right and one of the reasons they didn't have these things before was people were busy doing things right so as we become more affluent as things have been outsourced as there's been more you know, robots, more automation, you right? Know, people have this free time. And instead of basically before they'd be doing manual labor, they'd have these jobs that were, you know, nine to five, you worked hard, then you came home and you spent time with your family. Now you can literally turn on the TV and you're watching, you know, sports center, you're watching all these different talk shows. And so people, instead of investing that time in themselves or their family are basically being, you know, medicated uh, by these sports programming shows, like give them the circuses, right? And so people have less, they, they don't have th as many things to do. So they're creating this entertainment television. I mean, I remember there was three channels on the TV and like you couldn't watch it for eight hours, even if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, there was only a couple shows and they weren't that great. And so, you know, there was big events like MASH, like the whole, you know, whole family would watch MASH because it was a really good show. It was only on like once a week. So you would take that half an hour and you'd sit and watch MASH for a half an hour or Hockey Night in Canada. But now you've got 24-hour sports. You've got, you know, everything you could possibly imagine. 
And here's the other thing that social media does is it allows people to be tools, right? Because you're not going to say the things you'll say to somebody online in person. Most people are not that crazy, but it brings right. the worst out in people. And then if you have some, some things, if you have a lifestyle that is traditionally been absolutely, um, say you have a certain lifestyle or fetish that is not normal socially, Mm. Um, you know, 50, 60 years ago, it's, it would be very difficult for you to walk around on the street and I won't use specifics and say, Hey, I'm into this really weird kink. Right. Um, cause people be like, what? But now you can get online and say, I'm into this. And there's going to be, you can find hundreds of other people that not only are going to tell you it's okay, but are going to enable you on that, right? And you're going to be able to get that material, that propaganda. Sure. Where, you know, 50, 60 years ago, it was a lot harder to find people that were into a lot of these things than today. You can access hundreds of thousands of people on forums and in different places on the internet that are into the same craziness you are. And that kind of just fuels things. And it, it really, a lot of these things that are now kind of vomiting onto the scene that are, that are uh, appalling. Right really have been, you know, we've been battling this since the dawn of time. It's just that they've been fueled because people have been enabled and they also um, have places to go where they find other people. Well, this isn't that bad. And where it's normal. I'm normal. Like every, like everybody's into this and then they start trying to change society. And, and so it's, it's really interesting. And and social media plays uh, and the internet plays a big blame on that. Yeah, it's true. And, And then you look at, what's happening now is there basically anyone like if you want to know what the truth is look at what they censor Mm. whoever's being censored is probably over the target i call it bomber command right so like when you're over the target is when you're going to get the most flack so you're flying you know like a super fortress in world war ii yeah you're out in the middle of farmers fields the germans are not going to bother shooting at you but if you're like directly over like factories or in berlin you're going to have thousands of rounds of flack. So a lot of these people that are getting taken, deplatformed, um, you know, censored. I mean, look at what they did to, to RFK the other day in Congress. Like the Democrats just absolutely trashed him for an hour. Wouldn't let him talk. So that means he's over the target, bomber command, right? So you got to watch for that. But, um, you know, but it, but it all comes down to having discernment being mentally healthy enough not to get sucked into the masses. And that's, you know, it's really mass psycho- psychosis. And this this little device gives people to control populations like, like Stalin. He didn't have enough KGB. Hitler didn't have enough Gestapo. But we voluntarily signed up for our own little KGB Gestapo device, which is this. So the key is, is you have to learn how to use it without it using you. And as time goes by, um, there's going to come a time where you're going to have to separate yourself from that because it's going to be almost impossible to live a free independent life while being plugged into the the current system. That's it's, it's starting to go in that direction. It's part of why I think it's so crazy to have kids on these devices. Like when I see kids walking around with it and their parents just using it as the electronic babysitter, it's just shocking. Yep. And neither of us have children, but no. Bill Gates, Elon Musk, all these really high level tech guys. Yeah, they'll send their kids to Waldorf schools where they don't have any technology. They learn the old fashioned way. That is correct. Most of these kids that are the like the they have waiting lists at the Waldorf school, you know, in California because none of the CEOs of these tech companies allow their kids to to play with these things. Yeah. That should tell you something right there. Bomb it really should. Them. Bomber Jim, command. Any, any other last target. thoughts? Um, no, other than you've got, uh, we've got a thyroid uh, webinar. We're going to tell you all about the thyroid course we're releasing at the end of the month. We're super excited to help, you know, as many people as possible. Uh, uh, and of course, you can go into the YouTube lives and you'll be able to find that and set a reminder. Of course, we'll be reminding you of that over the next few weeks. Um, and then I think, uh, I wish to watch that with a... Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That, that, uh, interview with RFK where the Democrats just basically trashed him for an entire hour and then 
you know, said he didn't have the right to say any of this stuff because it was hate, hate speech and disinformation. And yeah, it's if you're a rational person and you see that, you're like, holy, this is insane. Like yeah, this is crazy. fascism at, at, at the highest level. Right. And it's right in front of our face. And most people aren't paying uh, attention enough because they're distracted by circuses and cakes. Cakes. Um, circuses. Cakes and circuses. Bread. But um, but yeah, we've got so we've got hormone a, webinar hmm? end of the month. End of the month. Bottom line. Anything and else? then of course, oh, you can always go to stillmanwellness.com to learn about the courses and the coaching plans that we got. You can go to Stillman MD to learn about all the stuff we have on the medical side of the plan. I think I mentioned yesterday that I'm going to be adding a strength and conditioning portion to the med medical side. If you're in the annual plans, that, in that involves group coaching. I've added um, strength and conditioning to the fundamentals of wellness course. You'll be able to get uh, a course with coaching. You'll be able to get on there with me, ask me questions. I'm going to film things, help people adjust their workouts, all that sort of thing. So that's available to us as well. And of course, we both have link trees where we have, you know, all the different products that we like. We're going to start promoting our Nicaraguan seminar here very shortly. Uh, we're doing a seminar in, in January. Basically, come and chill with us in Nicaragua. There's a couple other unique individuals and kind of help contribute to the gym I'm building there. We can check that out. But that's pretty much everything we got going on right now. Is there anything right. you want to, anything you want to talk about? No. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Take care. Have a great day. And don't forget to get outside. Amen.